Good morning. My name is Jehoe Reed, and I'm Associate Dean and Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid here at the law school. And I want to be the very first one to say welcome um, and welcome to USC, and of course, congratulations. Yay! <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, I have the, as I said, I have the distinct honor of being able to be the first work person to welcome you and to congratulate you on your admission to USC Law School. Um, this has been an extraordinarily competitive year for us. We had over 5,700 applications for the 200 seats. Um, each of you has first-rate credentials, and you're interesting, and you're a very diverse, diverse group of people. And we know that you have many options um, as to where you're going to be for the next three years. And so it would certainly be our privilege and our honor to have you join us as a Trojan. You know, you're now er nearing the end of your um, journey here um, through the admissions process, and many of you applied to a large number of schools. And so, of course, you were really busy, I'm sure, um, preparing all those personal statements and those addendums and getting all those letters of recommendation in, um, as well as complying with the gazillion deadlines that every law school has. Um, in turn, we too have been pretty busy in that process, um, compiling all your information and certainly carefully reading your files. <clears throat> um, you know, it's a job that we do take seriously um, because we believe that the careful review of your credentials and, and experience is how we create what I call a mosaic of a class. Um, that is a group of people who are really bright and interesting and diverse and who view their classmates as colleagues rather than competitors. You know, we have a very special culture here at USC, and everyone here works very hard to maintain and nurture it. And I hope those of you who attended the, the celebration of diversity last night, you experienced some of that. Um, you know, I tell students that I don't necessarily send out a memo to all those students telling them to give rave reviews about USC Law School. Um, so what you heard is, is from their hearts, it's very sincere in terms of how they feel about the law school, and certainly throughout the day, the students that you'll hear from on the different panels, as well as um, those students who will be at the Student Organization Fair, they too are very genuine and sincere in terms of what they feel about the law school. They don't get a referral fee, um, and so, uh, but this is a place that they love and they love being able to share it um, with other people who share similar v values and interests. You know, because we are a very small school, you can't hide out here. Um, we know who you are oftentimes, certainly before you know who we are. And sometimes, you know, that can shock people, particularly students who have come from relatively small, institu um, larger institutions. Um, in fact, last week we had a, an admitted student who was here from New York who came to visit and um, he stayed over the weekend and he came back on Tuesday um, to go to another class because he had a great time visiting the first class on Thursday. So he said, I'm going to come back on Tuesday. Um, came back and he was sitting in our lobby waiting um, for me, uh, actually waiting for the group of students who were going to class. And I stopped. I was walking past and I said, oh, hey, X. And he turned around and he was just really taken by surprise and he says, oh my God, you remembered my name from last week. And I said, yeah, you know, that, that's part of our job. That's who we are. And so for students, um, you know, that is a surprise to them because that is um, a hallmark of the institution in terms of really getting to know you and to demonstrate the importance of you and, and that we care about you. You know, our claim to fame on the first floor is providing great service. And I sincerely hope that um, you felt some of that during this process um, through our admission staff. One of the st um, students last year mentioned to me that, you know, there's this magic room on the first floor where it seems like everything is taken care of for you. Um, and the Enrollment Services Office is that, that room for you. It's in room 104. It's next door to the admissions office. Um, and it's, it comprises of the financial aid office and the student affairs staff and the registrar. And those folks will be the, the people that you will work with, particularly on a especially on a daily basis, whenever you need anything. Um, <clears throat> we don't want you to be crazed about, you know, worrying about, uh, you know, where do I find, um, where do I get a transcript, or um, how do I get parking. We try to handle everything for you here within the law school. So you don't have to worry about standing in line across campus, because, you know, it is a large campus. Um, there are 32,000 students here, so um, you can be a number, but we, we don't make you a number in the law school. 
Um, the Student Affairs Office provides academic counseling and sponsors an array of academic support programs for all of our students. Um, and in fact, you'll be hearing more from them um, in the coming weeks because there's a special pre-matriculation program, orientation program, that they'll be offering um, all entering students this coming summer. So be on the lookout for some special information as it relates to um, a program that they're going to be offering to help you get started on the right foot once you get here in law school. Now let me just take a moment um, to introduce you to that magical team um, that you have probably worked with over the last few months or had some kind of contact with, that is my admission staff. Um, I'm just going to ask them briefly um, to stand and while I introduce them. Um, by now you've received probably numerous emails or letters from Julia Kogan. Julia is the Director of Admissions. You'll be hearing more from Julia in a few minutes. Um, next is Brenda Cortez, our Associate Director for Outreach and Recruitment. Next is Amy Stevens. You've probably received a gazillion emails from her too. Um, next to her is Regina, well, Regina Morton and Will Caltron Amat are our, um, the great administrative team that particularly if you've called the law school, you've probably spoken to either Regina or Will at some point. Um, and then in the middle is Erin Lapping. Erin is our student, one of our student ambassadors. Probably you've received a phone call or an email from either Erin or Nate Madston. Um, these are, Erin and Nate are second year law students um, who love the law school and um, love talking to students about their experiences. And so um, they work about 10 or 12 hours a week for us, just having a good time chatting with you folks. Um, Nate is actually not here this morning, but you will see him later if you're going to attend the Public Interest Law Panel program. So um, he too is a great resource for you. Um, this is a really great team of people. I am privileged to have them as part of my staff. They love their jobs. They love students. Um, they enjoy working with you. And so um, all of them will be around throughout the day, of course, to answer questions or help you in any way. So if you have a question, don't hesitate to ask one of us. Um, that's our job. Thank you guys. Um, now about you. Um, among many of the things that the school, that many of items, the items that stood out in your application files were the range of backgrounds and experiences that you presented. Um, you know, diversity is one of the hallmarks of, of USC Law School and we're pleased that you're seriously considering USC because as a group you are diverse in many different ways. For example, in this room, there are residents from over 18 different states, and your current students are graduates from over 51 different colleges and universities from throughout the country. Your majors are varied from political science to biology to history to sociology, economics, accounting, business, and engineering, just to name a few. I'm especially pleased that many of you are visiting from out of state. 35% um, of our current first year class comes from out of state. And I know that many of you who have plans of beginning your life as lawyers somewhere other than with the West Coast, we're excited about that because that means you'll be able to leave here and go back to your hometowns and spread the gospel of USC. But I should provide just a brief warning or perhaps a disclosure to you. You know, today's weather, for those of you who are from the Northeast, um, is a typical day in Southern California. <laughs> It seems that it only takes one winter in Los Angeles where the average temperature is 70 degrees to convince some of you to remain in Southern California. And in fact, um, the statistics show that while 30 to 40 percent of the first year class comes from out of state, roughly 88 percent of you guys stay here at graduation. Nevertheless, we work really hard um, to keep our students' minds open to the big world beyond California. And we're looking forward to telling you more about that later today as, as a USC law student and how you can find, um, pursue your professional, professional ambitions and dreams, certainly outside of the state. In closing, I hope that you will carry with you from today's experience an understanding that we're deeply committed to your success. You know, finding a law school is much like finding a mate. You really have to do your homework and getting to know each other before you make a commitment. Hopefully after today you'll decide that this is the place where you feel like it's going to be home, you feel comfortable, and that you'll be taken care of. 
um, just as in a committed relationship, we'll promise to care and support you throughout your time here at the school and well beyond that. Earning a law degree isn't easy work, but I'm confident that with the help of those who you'll meet today, our faculty and our deans, our staff and our current students, you'll be happy, you will have enjoyed your law school experience, and you will finish law school with the same values and characteristics that brought you here today. That is optimism, a sense of humor, a sense of duty, and a sense of passion for justice. We thank you for coming and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Um, now I'd like just to turn the podium over to um, our Dean Robert Rasmussen. Dean Rasmussen came to, the, to USC last fall from Vanderbilt Law School where he had been a faculty member for 18 years. And in fact, at the exact same time last year, he was wrestling with the same issue that you're probably wrestling with too. That is, should I go to USC? Fortunately, we wowed him into coming here. Since arriving, he spent the last eight months hearing all about USC law, the past and the present, and about a great university. In addition, he's been traveling the country and meeting our alumni. And this semester, he put his ear to the grindstone and held town hall meetings with current students to seek their in input on what works well here at the law school and what we should improve upon. Next year, some of you will be privileged enough to have him as your contracts professor. He's a very approachable man and truly enjoys students. And in fact, while at Vanderbilt, he was elected Teacher of the Year, I believe, six times. Would you please welcome me, join me in welcoming Dean Rasmussen. I'm not going up there because um, you can tell from Shavoli's remarks. I didn't. What? They're taping. Yes. Can I go up there? Oh, I hate going up there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because the one thing that I really have missed this year is interacting with you guys. Uh, this has been the first year in 19 that I haven't taught a law school class, and it's killing me. So I'm really excited to be talking with you today and really even more excited about teaching contracts next year. Um, but let me start with a little story. Yesterday I went to the diversity uh, reception and it was great. I got a chance to meet some of you guys and I was really happy to learn that a lot of you have already decided to come to USC and talk to some of you who are still making up your minds. So after that I went home and I ran into my daughter Rachel. Daughter Rachel is 17. She's a senior in high school in Nashville, Tennessee. However, Rachel is in LA today and yesterday looking at colleges. And she was really just beaming. She said, you know, I did an admitted student stay and I'm ready to sign on the bottom line. I said, well, this is great because tomorrow I get to talk to admitted students and I want to see the excitement in their face that you have in yours. So tell me, how did the dean do it? And she looked and said, what? I said, well, what did the dean say? Well, I, said, I don't remember. And I said, well, well, why are you so excited about uh, the school? And she said, well, it was the students I met. Um, and the dean didn't say anything. She said, yeah, I think the dean said something, but who knows what that was? Um, so uh, I, I kind of realized in light of that conversation, my role here is just to you know, say a few words about USC, then turn you over to the true salesman, and that's our students. So as Dean Reed said, this has been my first year here, and I've spent uh, the last eight months trying to ask the question, what makes us special? Because I think when you're picking among elite law schools, you have to be able to articulate how do they differ amongst themselves? What are unique about each law school? And in reflecting on that question, I think there are six things that make USC the school that it is. Take away any of the six, we no longer are the USC that defines us. Um, the first feature of USC is we are a small school. Um, as you know, we have about 200 people in entering class. Um, what you probably may not know is this has a big effect on the quality of your legal education. You will learn as lawyers that learning law is a collaborative experience. 
It's between you and your faculty and you and your peers. A small law school facilitates that learning. A small law school allows you to know each and every one of your colleagues so you can form the bonds and have the discussion that's going to increase your legal education. It also allows you to interact on a more close and personal basis with your faculty member so they can push you individually, they can learn more about you, they can increase your education, and more important, not, well not more important, but also uh, when it comes time to apply for judicial clerkships or fellowships, they can write a meaningful letter of recommendation because they know who you are. That among elite law schools, there are a few small law schools. It's not unique to USC, but I think we are in the minority of elite law schools in our size, and I think that really does have an effect on the type of education you receive here at USC. The second thing which defines us as a law school is our commitment to diversity. We are the most diverse of this country's elite law schools, and that's just a plain and simple fact. And you might be asking yourself, well, that, that's fine, that's nice, why is it important to me? I think it's important to every student in the class for two reasons. First of all, in every educational setting, we realize that we're having a, becoming a more global community, that when you go out in the world, in whatever your profession, you're going to have to interact with people who come from different backgrounds and cultures from you. And part of your success is going to depend on how well you can navigate these distances. Can you connect across bridges? It's easy to connect with people like you. It's a more difficult skill to attain to connect with someone who's not like you. And if you come to USC, you will start that process of reaching across boundaries here while you're in law school. Diversity is also, I think, important, particularly to legal training. It's important to legal training because one thing that is essential to legal training is that we want to make you uncomfortable. We want to have you get into the mindset of questioning your assumptions, that everyone comes in assuming certain facts are true or certain situations are just natural. And part of our goal in the law school is to have you question those to pull them up for examination. And it's much easier to do that when you are in a class with people who don't share those assumptions, who don't come from your same background. So if you come to USC, we're going to have a unique legal experience, a unique legal education, because people sitting with you are different from you. And that is a very good thing. The third thing that defines us as a law school is our commitment to public service. Lawyers are privileged, part of the privileged class. Lawyers understand how government works. We can work our way around the laws. We can understand how decisions are made. But by and large, the decisions that are made, the laws that are passed, will not have effect on you. If you graduate from USC Law School, you will have a fabulous career, and you will be part of the elite of our society. That said, we believe at USC Law, in exchange for that, you have an obligation to give back. You have an obligation to reach out and enrich your community. Some people do that through going into careers in public service, public interest, the government. Others do it through serving their community in other ways while they're practicing law for major law firms. The way we instill that value here at, UC, at USC is to give you a lot of opportunities to engage in public service while you're a student. You will learn today about some of those opportunities. Let me just give you a few examples. Last year, my students donated over 4,000 hours in pro bono work as first years to people less fortunate than they do, than they are. This year, our Public Interest Law Foundation raised sufficient funds to give over two dozen fellowships to students who want to work in the public interest during the summer. I have a group of third years, a uh, number of about 40 or 50, a substantial portion of the class, who for each of the last three years, for the spring break, rather than going to Cancun or go skiing, whatever your favorite spring break destination of choice, went to New Orleans to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina. And they helped them by using their legal talents to help the victims navigate the legal maze that they're facing. Um, I can't really in the little time I have, I can't really tell you about all of the public service opportunities that we have here, 
But if you go to our website and look at the Office of Public Service, you'll see the broad array of public service options that you'll have available to you at USC. The fourth feature that defines us as a law school is we are a small school inside a large university. And that this is a benefit in two respects. First, quality legal education is by its nature interdisciplinary. This is something USC recognized over 40 years ago. That to be a first-rate attorney, you have to do more than simply know the black letter law. You have to draw on a variety of skills in advising your client and predicting what's going to happen in the future. You have to know some economics, some psychology, some philosophy, some history. All these things inform the practice of law. At USC, we not only bring those disciplines into the classroom when we teach you inside the law school, but you have the opportunity to go outside the law school and take classes in other parts of the university to enrich your education. That if you come to USC, you can go to your class in the philosophy department, in the economics department. You can keep learning about what makes people tick, because eventually that's what lawyers have to know, what makes people do the things they do. Secondly, great lawyers always understand the needs of their client. And another thing that you can do here at USC is go and start interacting with your clients before you leave law school. So some of you guys may want to think about being entertainment lawyers. <coughs> we have a film school here. You may have heard of it. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> in your second and the third year, you can go take courses in the film school that will introduce you into the business of the film industry. You'll get to make contacts and begin your network pro net networking while you're here as a student. If you want to be a corporate lawyer, the business school is right next door. You can sit down and take classes with the MBA students and learn how a business person looks at a deal so that when you're out practicing law, you can help facilitate <coughs> that deal. Are you interested in communications? We have the Annenberg School where you can learn more about communications policy and bring your expertise to bear in the issues that they struggle with at, 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 um, at Annenberg. The fifth thing I think that defines us as a law school is Los Angeles. We are the best law school, I think, in the best city in the world. Los Angeles is a dynamic place to live. It is culturally vibrant. It is stunningly beautiful. And it has always been an open city where people come and can go as far as their talent takes them. It is not a city that asks, you know, where do, how long has your family been here? You know, who are your parents? Who are your grandparents? That's not Los Angeles. One of the great hallmarks of the city is its openness and its receptivity to people like me, you know, coming here. As students, it helps you in a second way as well. As I said before, we're a small law school. That means our faculty can only offer a limited number of courses. It's just a fact. However, because we are in one of the world's leading legal markets, we can augment the curriculum by drawing on some of the leading practitioners in the world. We have courses here taught by people who are simply the expert in the field. That if you look at our curriculum, why we're a small law school, we have the curriculum of a large law school. They can teach things like the intersection of antitrust and intellectual property. They can teach mergers and acquisitions. They can teach advanced corporate reorganizations. It's hard to find an area that we don't teach because we're able to draw on the wealth of talent that Los Angeles provides. And it also provides you with a nice balance. You have some of your classes taught by the tenure-stream tenure faculty and some by practicing lawyers. So that gives you a nice balance between the theoretical and the practical. The sixth and, fi and final uh, defining feature of USC law is our alumni network. There is no doubt that we have the most loyal alums of any major law school. That I have yet to meet an alum who doesn't sing the praises of this law school and is willing to help you out in your legal career. As an example of this, every year we have a mentor lunch for the first years. We try to introduce the first year students to practicing lawyers, practicing USC alums, 
who you know can serve as a mentor function, and we just say, hey guys, can you come downtown and can you come down here to town and gown and have lunch with our students? I, it's amazing to say it, but it's true. This past year, we had more alums come down than we had students <laughs> to come and meet you, try to help you out. Um, I looked at the talent that was sitting in that room, and I was just really happy I didn't have to pay the hourly rate. Um, <laughs> you know, you think tuition is high, we'd have to really jack it up uh, to pay the amount of talent that was been given for free just because the students are part of the USC law tradition. So those are the six things that define us as a law school. I hope you spend the rest of the day learning more about the law school and interacting with our students because I want to see on your face the same excitement I saw on my daughter's face uh, when she got back and told me that, um, yeah, she is coming to USC. So thank you and I hope to see you guys around. Thank you, Dean Rice Museum, for the warm welcome. Um, I guess I get to be the third person to welcome you, but hey, I sign your admissions letter, so <laughs> I got you first. Um, I recognize a lot of the phases from the fall recruitment. Uh, you made it through the process. Easy, right? Uh, also from other events, admitted student events that we've had in the spring, and uh, some of you are flying from, uh, flew in from Washington, D.C. and New York, so we're, I'm excited to see you. Uh, welcome to our home. Um, uh, we have a jam-packed day, and we're excited to have you here. Uh, talk to as many students as possible, because uh, as Dean Rasmussen said, they are, they are what makes us who we are. Um, it's about our students, it's about our alums, and the kind of community that they have created for us. Um, each one of you is very special. I remember at least one fact, probably, um, about each one of you from your application. And, um, and I think once you become um, one of our students, everybody really gets to know you really, really well. Um, and again, I think the size matters, uh, the fit. Um, hopefully, um, we feel that you can fit in here, and that's what we extended the invitation um, to join us in the fall. And uh, hopefully um, today you'll, you'll find out a little bit more about us. Uh, I have some, um, just briefly go over the agenda because it's, there's a lot. So uh, I want to remind you that on your name tag, there is a ticket um, with your uh, table number. So that's your lunch assignment. When you're ready to come to town and gown, we're going to meet back here for lunch. Um, and uh, just remember where your table is. It's in the back of your name tag. We have, after this, you will be um, joining the faculty um, in um, two different rooms. We have two panels, two faculty panels. And then um, this year, we actually, this was Dean Reed's idea, we created a, a, a more exciting agenda where we know everybody has a different interest, so we don't want to shepherd you into different, the same sessions. Uh, you can choose, you can choose from different panel discussions that will be going on at the same time, um, public interest in the law, student life um, and money matters, library and computing and housing information, and um, again, just choose what you would like after the faculty panel. Um, at 11, uh, 11.25 to 12.10, you have another option, um, and I believe the student life panel will repeat again with different group of students. So if you want to sit for two student panels, you'll really get to know us um, <laughs> very quickly. The, um, like I said, after that, we'll meet here for lunch, and I, I will go over the afternoon activities after um, the speaker at lunch. So we're going to break the room um, by alphabetical order. So if your last name is between A through L, you're going to walk to room three with Amy Stevens. Amy? Amy, she's back. She's back there. So we'll um, dismiss this first group first. So if you can join Amy here.
Brent is here. So Brent, if you're going to go out this door. So if you just take them that way, because I don't want them to come to that. Okay, the rest of you guys. M through Z's. <laughs> you go with Brenda to room 101.